Welcome to More Details, Please, with your hosts, Emmanuel and Angela Williams, where we dive deeper into conversations with visionary entrepreneurs to discover what it takes to turn passion into purpose. Listen to real-world stories from self-starters and trailblazers and discover strategies and innovations shaping a greener future. Whether you are a seasoned business person or just starting out, let this be your go-to resource for inspiration and actionable tips for success. Join us now as we create a brighter, greener future together. Welcome to More Details, Please, broadcasting live at the Phoenix Business Radio X Studios in Tempe, Arizona, where we help entrepreneurs turn their passion into purpose. We're your hosts, Angela. And Emmanuel Williams. And today we have as our guest, Laura Madden. Not to be confused with Steve Madden, but Laura Madden. We're going to tell you all about her. Emmanuel? Laura, so thank you for being a wonderful guest on our show. This show highlights entrepreneurs. And one of the things that we want to bring to this conversation is the fact that the things that we do with our gifts and talent our ability to make the world a better place because of it. And when you find your passion and you turn it into purpose, you're serving a greater good. So we are really excited to hear your journey, to hear what you, how you evolved to where you are. And we're going to just sit back and just kind of enjoy and have a great conversation that we will bring enlightenment to people as we have fun. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. All right. Well, you get ready for fun. So Laura is an artist, and she's the founder of Refashion Art, which is all about sustainability. So she is a sustainable fashion advocate. So a little bit about her background, because I think it's very interesting. So she prides herself on helping art collectors and designers pick the perfect piece to add to their fashionable edge to their walls, which is why she started creating art in the first place. So she's going to tell us all about that during today's interview. So listen up as we meet Laura. Okay, Laura. So first, we're going to start with, tell us about you. Where you come from, where you're born. I mean, how'd you get here? Come on, tell us about you. Well, it's a long story, but cliff notes. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and I went to school for kinesiology and exercise science and physiology in New Hampshire, and I have moved all over the country for my husband's job. And we are back in Arizona for the second time. We are so happy to be here. We really wanted to get back to Arizona and thankfully it worked out for us. And so now it's been five years that I live here in Phoenix. Nice, wonderful. Being back in the Phoenix area has to um, be interesting because so much has changed, right? So you see things come and develop and you're like, where that wasn't there before. How'd that get there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It is. It is different. So you decided to pursue this in 2019. Tell us a little bit about why you decided to pursue this business venture. It almost like found me and it, it, the best way to describe it is that I couldn't outrun it anymore. You know, it was not too long after we moved back here and I had been making a lot of art and I had been making art for many years of my adult, my my adult life, but just for my own homes. It was really just for myself. I didn't tell anybody. And so after moving here, I'd made a lot of art, really filled my home with art. And I was getting a lot of feedback from people who would come over for a visit and people would ask, why wouldn't you want to do this? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want to sell this? And, you know, it finally, I think, infiltrated my mind and it, mm-hmm. it's kind of like unlocked a key or something. And I think it really unlocked confidence and courage yes. because I had thought about it for many years, but it was like, you know, no, no, no. Like people are going to think you're so weird, you know? <laughs> and it, I mean, it's really the strange conversation I had in my head and it's really about not honoring my passion. Yes. And so I finally, you know, it was almost four years now that I decided, you know, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to do this. And I think part of it is like you get to a certain age and you realize time is not coming back. And I just thought I was doing the fashion, building my fashion business brand. And on a certain level, it was really not fulfilling me in the way I, my expectation, you know, 
and so I I knew I just I want to make art. Like I just want to make stuff. Yes. And so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that's interesting. I know Imaya was over there nipping that <laughs> bit because you just said something. Uh. Yeah. yeah, you did make a statement that was really interesting. You said <clears throat> you couldn't outrun it anymore. You could not outrun it anymore. What was you running from? Well, you know, I honestly, and it sounds it might sound so silly. It sounds stupid even hearing myself say it, but I really think I thought people would just think I was so weird. And, you know, I, I went to school for, you know, kinesiology, health, and I worked in that realm for many years. And then I was doing personal shopping and styling, and I did some, you know, confidence coaching, and I did all these things. And so I, I, I kind of felt like... I don't want to be a jack of all trades <laughs> doing another thing, you know, another moving into another career. And so part of it was what would other people think and just surrendering to, well, people might think I'm weird. You know, people might think not great things and just accepting that. You know, that's the thing that I love about entrepreneurship because it's constantly stepping outside of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. <laughs> and having the courage to face whatever those obstacles are. And a lot of times they're just the voices in our head. A lot of times those are the things that we're not conscious of, that, but we reinforce in our subconscious mind because we take heed to those voices, right? And to hear you in your pursuit of evolving as an entrepreneur, you're also also evolving as an individual, which is a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, very much. And yeah, those voices were very loud to not do this. Mm -hmm. You know, it was not okay. It just didn't fit in the box. It didn't look how I wanted it to look. But at the same time, there was a large part of me that knew that was like in my, it was in me. So, yes. And, and beautiful. That's great. Yes. So, Lord, let's talk a little bit about, because this, our listeners, they are at all different levels of their entrepreneurial journey. And this is saying, all right, now I have my passion. This is what I've enjoyed. I've done it for myself. And I have created some beautiful things around my home and for my family to enjoy. And now others are asking about it. And I would love to create some beautiful things for them. But now it's not just something that we would say is a pastime. This is something where you want to earn money. So who would be your typical client? Definitely somebody who values style and they mm -hmm. value feeling a sense of luxury in their home. You know, they're art lovers, maybe they're fashion lovers. Mm -hmm. They love that luxury product and they love just being surrounded by style. Got it. And then how do you generally find that typical client? A lot of it is Instagram. Ah. A lot of it is Instagram. Um, I do a lot of networking, local networking as well. Uh, a lot of networking in the design community. But I really started on Instagram. It really started with starting in Instagram. You know, it's interesting. My actual Instagram got hacked. And when that <sighs> happens, they don't let you post yes. for like an indefinite amount of time. And I was so upset. And I thought, this is garbage, you know the heck? So I said, forget, it. I'm, I'm just going to start a whole other Instagram. And it, that was right when I decided I was going to, I wanted to start my art. I was going to do this. So it was just dedicated to my art. Nice. And I just, I post on there every day. Ah. So, you know, when you're consistent, you, you and you, you engage, mm -hmm. you know, you, you do build up that following. Yes. You can. Yes. So when you think about your followership today, which will continue to evolve, but your followership today is those people that like the way you entice them to engage. How do you get your followers to engage? Well, I definitely try and be, I, I try and show my true self. Mm -hmm. I love fashion and I love aesthetics. Mm -hmm. It's just, it like, it's like, I love eye candy. Yes. And so I do my best to really show that off. Like mm -hmm. I try and show the art in a home, in a space and how it can elevate a space. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also doing a lot of video. So trying to get on there, go live and actually speak because it's so much easier for someone to understand who you are and 
you know, the passion behind your work when you're at, when it's more dynamic, yes. you know, instead of just looking at a photo. Right. That can actually just be superficial and you can easily attract the wrong people. So Absolutely. I, yeah, I do. It's scary, but I do get on there and talk as much as, as much as I, I'll do a live today. Okay. Like today I'll have a little pocket. And so I'm going to get in my studio and put the camera on and just go live. That is fantastic. So now she's her, her authentic self in the social environment and she's sharing. So therefore she's connecting with her followers on a deeper level. Now let's talk about that. Well, yeah, let's, let's talk about that because <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to notice your evolution as in human. A lot of times we find ourselves being stagnated by fear. And we become comfortable, but we know inside of us there is that evolution that is trying to cause us to move into another place of joy and beauty and the things that we really want to do in life. And I call that a pregnant, a pregnant moment. And it's a pregnant moment filled with possibilities of optimistic and opportunities. And that is, you know, I look at each one. Each and every one of us is just an expression of love. And coming back to you, when you yield to that evolution that was evolving through you at the pregnant moment, it was the joy that you wanted to share with the world. And the way that you are expressing it is through fashion. Because the beauty that people experience when they see their fashion is the same beauty that's in you that's trying to get it out to get it to everybody. So that is going to a deeper level of our connectedness with each other. And it goes back to, I would say, purpose. Why are we here and what are we doing here? And what is it that we need to do in order to make this world a better place? So well said. <laughs> yes, yes. So talking about connecting on a deeper level, that's kind of, because when I was reading about you, I said, wow, she's into beauty. And she has a unique way of expressing that. And that beauty comes where a outer expression of something that stimulates our senses creates a feeling of inside of love inside of us. And that's where all of our connection is. is. So thank you for that. Well, that's, uh, can you write my copy for my <laughs> website sometime? I love that. Sounds great. But yes, in, in very accurate. I Yes, for sure. Right on. Yes. So let's talk about something that you said earlier, which I think is very common for entrepreneurs. I'm sure you've gotten to a point now where it doesn't matter if people think you're strange or if people think that's a silly idea or, oh, why are you doing that? You don't, you care less about that and more about what you give to your work. So therefore it shines through. So therefore people experience it. But it's for that entrepreneur or that individual that's thinking about starting a business. How do you help them, based on your experience, get beyond that? Caring what other people think. Well, you know... And let's talk about it on several different levels. Well, I think the first thing is thinking about the person that you want to help, the person you want to serve. Mm -hmm. Because when you take it off of yourself, you take the pressure, you take the spotlight off of yourself, yes. it, you're making it about them. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier to be like, I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it to be of service instead of, I just want to build this thing and I want to make sure it's good and I want people to like it. So it's, and it's almost like it can be like a brainwashing process mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. just like thinking about the other person. Yes. Like if someone buys my art, I hope it brings them so much joy every time they walk past yes. that piece. And so it's really focusing on, I guess, service, you know, and mm -hmm. that is why we start businesses, yes. you know, you're meeting a need. Yes. There is a need that is out there in the marketplace. And you said, there's a need. I'm going to meet it. Yes. And it is tricky. It's been tricky for me because art is a luxury item. Mm -hmm. It's We can live without art. You know, people, it's not like food or drink or air. And so it really is like imagining how much joy, how much happiness, how, mu how much it, could this enhance someone's well-being, being able to see something that they really enjoy. That's the need. That, that's so funny that you said that. I'm like, well, there are some people that probably can't live without it. But I get your point. 
We're going to be eating and drinking. It's kind of a little bit higher on the list, but <laughs> go ahead, Emmanuel. No, I was just saying, like, living in a world that we're living in, with all of the chaos and the confusion that's going on, you know, for them to see your art, for them to see your fashion, and for them, for that brief moment of pleasure, of stopping their mind and going with them to that inner beauty, that's so powerful. And I think people, they take that for granted. So what you're doing is a service to the world. What you're doing is you align yourself with why you was here. Because we are all here to enjoy this journey together. And so that is when you talk about the service that you provide for other people, it is so deep and it's so rich and especially needed in times like this. So that's what this entrepreneurship thing is, all of us. So if, whether you're cleaning a car or whether you're a fashion designer or whatever it is, it's not what you do. It's how you do what you do and what flows into what you do to serve a, a, a greater good, which is other people. Yes. So it, it's funny because that leads us right into what drives you. Because not only do you look for beautiful art and those people who can appreciate beautiful art, but it's sustainable. Yes. So tell us what drives you in putting those two things together. Well, I think I've always been curious about the environment Mm -hmm. and really interested in waste. And waste was always something that kind of just bothered me. Mm -hmm. You know, why do people have to throw things away that we can still use? And I think it was really through my work in fashion that it blew my mind open because there's extreme waste in fashion. And it's one of the biggest polluting industries on the whole, in the whole world. And so it was through that, that I really got like tuned in to what can I do to reduce waste? And I got really into how can I repurpose things, started shopping secondhand. Ah. And so that I had normalized that, like Mm -hmm. this circular economy of reusing things that already exist and not throwing things out, you know, when I'm trying to find another, a second life for something. And so when I decided to start my art business, I just, I don't know, I had this uh, instinct to commit the practice, commit this work to repurposing. Ah. And I quickly found out that there is no shortage of stuff. There is, <laughs> I have a collection. Everywhere. Yes, I have <laughs> frames. I have, there is no shortage of stuff. And yeah. so I find more than I need. And, you know, it's just, I feel like if there's any way I can reduce our impact or, you know, help reduce our impact on the planet, then I, then I, I have to do it. I have to do it. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people who are so crazy about the environment and you don't have to do everything, but if you do something, I do think it, it counts. Yeah, it can absolutely. make a difference. I, I always give the example um, to our team because sustainability and green is really what our company is all about. Right. And I said, we have to look at it on every level. It's from when I am brushing my teeth, do I turn off the water? Right. I mean, really, so we can save our precious resource just by the simple things. Now, that has nothing to do necessarily with anything else, but do I at least think about it? Right. And if I think about it, it's going to help me focus on other things that are more sustainable, too. Totally. I feel like it will start opening your mind to other ways, like batching your car drives. Absolutely. And all that things. So, you know, it really, I do have a commitment to doing my part for the planet. Yeah. At the same time, when you use uh, reclaimed materials and unconventional items to make fine art, it does result in this unrivaled aesthetic and style yes. that I'm really, it's, it's my thing. Like I love, it doesn't exactly make my life easier, <laughs> but I do. I love it. I come, I come up with unusual things, things that I, I haven't seen anywhere else. And that's really w- another part of what this business is. Like it's cutting edge, something no one has seen anywhere else. Right. Every piece is that unique piece. It's yes. not the same piece. Like I hope you can so. just go to Walmart and I want 10 of those. Right. No, you have to create every one. That- okay. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you then start to scale your business. So when you look at, it has to be someone that has an eye for it, or they would go to replicate. And maybe sometimes that's okay. Right. But how do you scale it? 
You know, it's tricky. And I'm kind of in that, I'm kind of in that murky area right now Mm -hmm. because you are, so now I'm doing more commissions. Mm -hmm. And so that on is another level of scaling, but I would love to bring in opportunities where I am working with brands and designers to create other items, Uh, other items using my designs. Okay. And so I've, I have a few partnerships, but I would love to move in that direction. Got it. So let's talk about it. What other, if, if you had to think about what would be these dream partnerships that I'd like to um, create, give me some examples of who or the industry or the type of individual that you would want to bring into your camp. Home apparel really grabs me. Ah, because I've I've realized how much my environment affects me, mm-hmm. you know, and affects my everyday mood and well being. So, yes. having a presence in the home apparel, whether it's um, pillows or other textiles, uh, maybe furniture. Okay. Although I like more minimal, so that would be a tricky. <laughs> I like more minimal furniture pieces, but definitely, you know, things like the textiles. Some of my designs I've played around with making plates or Um, on, you know, mm -hmm. um, dishware. So things like that, that people could use every day. And so maybe they don't need wall art, but they could still enjoy art every day in other ways. Absolutely. It's so fun. I'm not going to talk about this mug because we all have ones, which means they're mass produced, but nonetheless. But let's just say it was a mug. And then you were creating a unique mug, maybe based on personality for each person. I mean, it would just be so dynamic because you... That we talked about connection earlier. You get to connect with that individual to learn right. what their likes and dislikes are, et cetera. And then you create a piece that is specific to them. Commissioning is, is a big part of that, I'm sure. Yes. So explain to our listeners if they don't understand that part of the fashion and art industry. What is the commissioning of art? Well, if somebody wants a piece of art that Mm -hmm. doesn't already exist, they might say, you know, can you make me something like this one, but in this size Mm -hmm. um, on a canvas that's this thick? And they just tell me what they want, and then I go to work creating it. it. So in that way, you're a consultant. Yes. Yes. So they tell you what you need and you figure out how to help them to get it. Yes. Awesome. All right. Let, let's let talk about this a little bit. Now, you are expanding your business. You're looking to scale your business. You have an idea of who your potential partners are. What else at this point in time, as you are growing your business, would you be looking to get involved in? What, what, what are the other pieces? What are the other industries? And I don't mean just general networking. Where do you go next? The first thing that comes to mind is just the, the design community. Got it. I feel like that is really, that's the area that can, can either connect me to that brand, the manufacturer, so mm-hmm. to speak, or maybe they have an idea or a showroom and they would like to partner in some way. Awesome. Awesome. Have you thought about art studios and actually doing showings and all of that? I've done some. Okay. I have done some, yes. And so that will definitely be moving forward. Yeah, you got trade shows and fairs and yeah, whole bunches of things where you can um, display your art, which is fantastic. Now, I'm going to go full circle with you. And this is full circle. Your degree... I'm going to get it wrong, but let's just say it's an exercise pro. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. And then fashion and then this creative art. So you're using all of it already, but did you see how each of the experiences that you have had to date got you to where you are right now? Not at all. Isn't that funny? I mean, now only because it's been asked. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can see, and I can see how so many things I had to do for fitness, for fashion, yes. prepared me almost more in a way of resilience mm-hmm. for this. Yes. But yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. And, and for a while, it's like so frustrating because it's like, make it make sense. <laughs> you know, how does it like, how do you connect these dots? But eventually, Yeah. It's very interesting. I just feel like you just had an aha moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we're recording this. Well, well you know, it's, it's, 
you know, it's interesting that that impulse that you was feeling to say, yeah. I've got to move in this direction. It's, it's sort of like nature constantly moving from one place to the other without thought a thought process, which is an aligning yourself with a higher consciousness that we're all connected to. And um, for you to become aware of that and start to really see how is all of these pieces of the puzzle is coming together, even with being here, being on a podcast. My thing is, as you start to continue to step into those uncomfortable places in your mind and in your emotions, those are the doors that has to unlock in order for you to step into this next level to start manifesting and attracting the people that you desire to come into your space. And that's all of our journey. That's the journey of an entrepreneur. Isn't it really, really exciting to say, you know what? Fear is no longer a barrier. Right. I'm going to start to walk <laughs> through these doors and deal with these doors and manifest in a way that um, I'm deserving because that's why I am here on this planet. I love that. Yes. 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 So, Laura, let, let's let's do one more kind of tying it all together. What you do well is express your journey of where you started, kind of those steps to get to the next point and the next point, and you have a vision to know what you want to get to next. If there was advice that you would give to another of how to help them get started, and then we'll talk about how to progress in the business. What advice would you give? I do think uh, building that uh, support network. Mm -hmm. So whether it's hiring a consultant or a coach or joining networking groups or just going. Yes. Like you said, like walking through the door, you know, getting yourself uncomfortable, just going, putting yourself in these rooms with other people. So you can even just practice talking about mm -hmm. what you want to do. So it's the community is so important. Yes. Because at the end of the day, when it gets hard, then it's just you. And it's like, why am I doing that? You know? Absolutely. And a lot of entrepreneurs will say it's lonely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is lonely yes. when right. you are out there. And it is so funny because the parallel is during COVID, people weren't in the office anymore and everybody was on Zoom or some <laughs> type of video technology. <laughs> so it was like, oh, this is lonely. As an entrepreneur, that's every day. Right. Right. It, it is every day. So finding that community so you're not alone. And a lot of the experiences that we have are very similar. I mean, it's so funny. If, if we are in one business or another, one industry or another, it doesn't matter. The experiences and the challenges that we experience are the same. So let's talk about your greatest challenge to date. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, two, mindset is one for sure. It's mm -hmm. that just continuing to up-level the mindset of what's possible. Yes. Especially as an artist. You know, this is a new world. So, you know, I have big dreams. Mm -hmm. So it's that mindset and belief. But it's also, as an artist, space. Yeah. I have inventory. I was go there next. I have inventory <laughs> and I have a house. <laughs> Full of art. So it's building the network, people who can show the art or purchase the art. So that's a real concern that I never can I never considered that. Where yes. am I gonna put all of these pieces? Right. Well, and and because you are looking at reclaim and sustainability. I'm sure your husband is very supportive, but after a while, it's like, honey, you got your studio area, you got the upstairs, you got a woman cave, you and my man cave, you are everywhere. <laughs> yes, he said that. you are everywhere. <laughs> so learning to manage that situation while at the same time managing yes. your love. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because that's important too. That is important too. So let's talk about work-life balance. So as an entrepreneur, I, I hear that a lot. I have my own opinions about that, and I will save them. And I want to hear a little bit about, well, how do you manage? I have a home life that I'm taking care of. I have family and friends and others. And I have this business and this passion that I am truly turning into more than just a pastime. This is my business. So how do you balance that? You know, it is a tricky thing for me. And I kind of go back and forth with there is no balance. Ha! Well, I mean, that's what I said. 
it, it's my passion. <laughs> it is my business. It is so much of this is my life. Yes. And I want it. I mean, I'm so blessed that I get to do this. Have fun. <laughs> yes. And so I do spend as much time working on this as I can. Yep. I think my balance, my issue is rest, getting ah. enough rest because I have a lot of energy, mm-hmm. but I have a tendency to want to use all of it up. <laughs> and that's when I get into like burnout. Yes. And, and, I, and that has happened to me many, many times. Yes. And it happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. So I'm not going to sit here like that it has not happened. And <laughs> When I am experiencing burnout, the people that I'm closest to, sorry, honey, they yeah. experience it the most. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let, let's talk about that from the standpoint of how we can help other entrepreneurs kind of manage through. And, and I'm going to say self-care because I know that's like a buzzword for now. But how do we manage through that to ensure that we don't continuously hit that burnout point? Yeah, I mean, for me, part of it is having a shutoff. Like after 5 p.m., unless there's something really important that has to get done, I am off my computer. And I try not to get on my phone at all because it's so easy to get sucked in or you're texting someone and they have another question and another question. So I try to literally draw that line. And for me, I just have to do that Mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just hard to shut it off. Um, And then just, you know, sleep is major big time big business for me. And yes. so staying off my screen, I think helps me sleep mm-hmm. all night. But yeah, I mean, sleep and, and I've, I'm kind of a nerd. Like I go to bed early. I don't party. And, but I, I know that's how I'm going to be my best. Yes. A uh, full night's sleep. I get up super early, but that's like, that's where my energy is. Like I'm going to groove and it's good. Yeah. So, you know, I know I'm a nerd and there are people who are like, God, you're no fun. And I, I, that's okay. I have more fun. It's more fun to win oh, <laughs> at your life. Absolutely. You know, and your health. So. Well, right. well, one thing that I know for sure is that you represent yourself very well because you're such a beautiful lady. Yes. So Aww, I just want yes. you thank to you. thank Inside you. and out. Yeah. I want yes. you to thank you for grace in our studio with not only the external beauty, but I feel the the joy that's coming from emanating from you as you talk about your passion and your purpose. Thank you. Well, yeah. I'm thrilled to be here, and I also love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, you, but you, you're not talking just to talk. I mean, you're talking because you are definitely sharing your experience where others can hear those nuggets and pick up on it. So it, it's one thing just to be someone that talks endlessly, and after a while, it's like, what would you say? <laughs> I mean, you're actually sharing things that are important to us, our audience, and yourself. Because a lot of times when we're talking, we're really talking to ourselves. Well, well, one of the questions that I do have is, what do success look like for you? I think to be able to get up every day and do what you love and have enough people who are willing to receive what you love Mm -hmm. so you can keep doing it. Mm-hmm. you know, in a sustainable way. And so, of course, a lot of that is having sales and having money coming in mm-hmm. from doing what you love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Yeah, because that's really what makes a business go. And yeah. that's really how you separate a pastime from yes. an actual business. Yes. <laughs> I yes. mean, pastimes are good, but the mortgage comes due. But, yes. but, but this is the interesting <laughs> thing about it for me. You know, we've been, I've been an entrepreneur for over 30, 40 years, right? And I used to have this belief that once I get to this particular place and have a certain amount of money, then that's what success is. But what I found out was success to me is about becoming the person, overcoming and constantly becoming to the point where it doesn't matter where I am, where I go, who I'm with, because of who I am. I'm a manifest and attract whatever it is that I desire anyway. So I used to say, you know, the company Detail Expert, the blessing in it was having all of those challenges and dealing with all of those different people and going through those ups and downs and creating an environment where my wife and I can test each other, can can have to go step out on a limb. And in those, in that process, you become somebody, for me, my value changed to where 
It's like, I'm going to wake up and do something that I enjoy doing regardless and everything that I need. Not to say that I'm not going to work, not to say that I don't have to pay bills, but I'm stepping out here and I'm going to attract and manifest. That's why when you walked into this room, you felt the energy. Being connected to that and allowing that to guide you, which you are on that journey, is a beautiful thing. Yeah, so it's more of a process. Like, it's not like you've arrived. At oh, right. it's success. And, ne- and right. you're in there. There is yes. a never yes. arrived. Right. Yes. Yes. You're always right. in the process or on the journey. But maybe so. that's more of the, to the point of actually being successful. Mm-hmm. You are always... Are successful. You, yeah, you're always evolving. You're <laughs> yes. always in the evolution. Yes. Instead of just getting and stopping. Yes, yes, yep. so, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds more fun, too. A successful <laughs> present moment. Success is defined as success in this moment. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, because we're here right now. All right, fantastic, Laura. So let's talk about how can our listeners get in touch with you? What is the best way to get in touch with you? Besides Instagram, and we will post on Instagram. I'm a newbie, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. So how can, and if Instagram is it, please tell. We need your Instagram handle. Well, Is that, that what it's called, an Instagram? Yes. You, okay. You're a, you're a fast learner. You're a fast learner. <laughs> Instagram would be but website at the okay. end of the day, shop.iamlauramadden.com. Got it. Shop. S H O P. Yes. Dot. Yes. Laura Madden. I am Laura Madden. Ah, I am Laura Madden. No, I had to make I it got tricky. It. I had to make it a little more creative. No, I love it. I love it. We want to just make sure they can find you. Could yes. you spell your name out? Just L A U R A M A D D E N. Thank you. Welcome. Got it. All right, so we're going to give them the whole um, website so that they have it as well, and that is shop. S H O P dot I A M Laura Madden L A U R A M A D D E N dot com. You can also reach her on Instagram, refashioned art, refashioned art. So, Laura, we are so excited that you were here with us. I mean, this has been so much fun because you have a true passion for what it is that you do, and that makes us so very happy excited. So thank you. So you. And well, I more? just want to end it by saying your journey is our journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I we are all it. on this journey <laughs> together. You. This yes. went by so fast. Yes. I know. It, it is so fun. It, it, it's like you don't even think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are great. Thank you. <laughs> this was fun. So you've been listening to more details, please, on Phoenix Business Radio X. This podcast is brought to you by Detail Experts, the mobile steam cleaning company that saves the planet one franchise at a time. So our next time, we are Angela. And Emmanuel Williams. And we're here with Laura Madden. Yay! Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Thank you for listening to More Details, Please. Presented by Emmanuel and Angela Williams from Detail Experts, the mobile steam cleaning company dedicated to protecting the planet. Be sure to subscribe to More Details, Please on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow us on Facebook at Detail Experts and visit detailexperts.net. That's D E T A I L. X-P-E-R-T-S dot net. We hope you've gained some valuable insights from our conversations today. Stay driven by curiosity, and we'll bring you more details next time.